And this work has been done at the Doheny Eye Institute at uh, the University of Southern California. And this is our group. Uh, my major collaborators are Dan Han Zhu, who does most of the culture work. Uh, this is uh, Raj Agrawal and Mark Maya, who are the ophthalmologists that do the surgical aspects of the project. And this is Martin Perra, who's the director of our Stem Cell Institute. And this work was done by funding from CERN as a seed grant. So age-related macular degeneration is the leading cause of blindness in the elderly. And about 1.7 million Americans have visual loss due to AMD. And this is a disease of aging, so that population is increasing. So it's thought by about 2020, that number is expected to reach about uh, 6 million people. And uh, macular degeneration affects the retina, which is a film of light-sensitive neural tissue located at the back of the eye. And the macula, which is specifically affected in this disease, is a specialized area of the central retina about the diameter of a, of a pencil uh, that is only found in primates. And the macula is the region of the retina that is specifically affected in AMD. So what's the function of the macula? The macula provides sharp, high, acu high acuity central vision. And these are, it's essential for activities such as uh, reading, identifying faces, driving. And peripheral vision is spared in the disease, so they lose the central vision. So the symptoms of AMD include, include this blurred central vision, uh, central blind spots, as you might see here, or a distortion of the central vision. So you can see it'd be very, there's a tremendous impairment of this disorder. <coughs> Now it's very interesting that the retinal pigment epithelium is the primary site of pathology in AMD. And here we can see that layer here. It's a single monolayer. So the ARC PE plays a real critical role in the maintenance of the light sensitive photoreceptors, which are present here. And the ARC PE forms a single monolayer of highly pigmented cells at the interface between the photos, photoreceptors and the vascular core right here. And it's separated by a thick, five-layer extracellular matrix called Brooks membrane. Here you can see it here. Here's the retinal pigment epithelium. Here's the vascular choroid here. And here's that thick base of membrane right there. What's really interesting is in adult life, the RPE do not proliferate. And that, um, only under very uh, unusual circumstances. And there's really minimal regenerative potential. So really, the RPE cells that you're born with are the RPE cells that you die with. There's a progression in age-related macular degeneration, and the early form of the disease that we see here can progress to a late blinding form of the disease characterized by either dry geographic atrophy, as we see here, or this wet form of choroidal neovascularization where you get growth of blood vessels underneath the retina. Now, for the very first time, there's an effective therapy for the wet form of age-related macular degeneration generation using anti-VEGF drugs. And this, in fact, developed quite quickly. In 1996, we were the very first to demonstrate that there's very high expression of VEGF in human wet AMD tissue samples. And then by uh, June 2006, the FDA approved the dry Lucentis, which is an anti-VEGF antibody fragment, which has improved the vision of patients uh, when they're given this drug by intraocular injection. But unfortunately, the majority of patients with AMD have the dry form of the disease. And that dry form of the disease is characterized by RPE atrophy and cell loss. And at the present time, there's no effective treatment for patients with this very common form of the disease. So what we've proposed is treatment of atrophic or dry AMD by replacing the lost and dysfunctional RPE with human ES derived retinal pigment epithelium. What we do is we use uh, embryonic stem cell aggregates are cultured for three days to form embryoid bodies and a specific retinal neural differentiation medium, which has both uh, growth factors and growth factor inhibitors. And then the embryoid bodies are then grown in an RPE differentiation medium for eight to 12 weeks. And RPE are dissected away, and we get 100% pure cultures of retinal pigment epithelium. 
And this shows the RPD cells which are growing. This is the sheet of RPD cells which are now growing out. What we do is that we dissect out the RPD cells here, replate them, and we get 100% pure cultures of these highly pigmented retinal pigment epithelial cells. Now this has been done by several other laboratories by somewhat different methods. Uh, I think ours is, is a more focused approach to get very pure population. But what others have done is they use single cell suspensions of the retinal pigment epithelium for subretinal transplantation. What we believe though is that in order for the RPD to really function properly and survive, they have to regain their highly differentiated polarized phenotype. So polarization of the RPD is monolayer is really critical to its normal function. If we were to take a normal eye and dissect out the retinal pigment epithelium, this is what it's going to look like. So we dissect out this RPE layer here, and we use a scanning electron micrograph scope, and we look on the apical surface, that's the surface facing the photoreceptors, and you can see it's highly polarized cells with apical microvilli. So each one of those is an individual RPE cell. These are the microvilli that interface with the outer segments of the photoreceptor cells. And if we look at a transmission electron micrograph, here are those apical microvilli, here are those melanin, pig, melanin uh, granules which are present in the apical aspect of the cell. And you can see that the cells are joined by tight junctions. So these are very highly polarized differentiated cells. This is just normal retina. So we've developed a method to induce the growth of cultured human RPE derived from fetal retinas in which we're able to show that we can get highly differentiated polarized RPE. And this is using a transwell culture system with a very uh, specialized defined media where the RP cells are growing here. So we developed this method using fetal, RP, fetal RPD cells. And you can see that we can recapitulate the, the RPD layer as a very highly differentiated monolayer. This is showing tight junction proteins. This is showing the scanning EM. And you see those apical microvilli. It looks essentially identical to the normal explant that I showed you before. And this is the transmission EM showing apical microvilli, apical melanin granules, and tight junctions. So now what we've done is we've applied that same method that we used for fetal RPE cultures to the human ES derived RPE, and we can differentiate them to the same extent. So here's this monolayer of uh, RPE cells derived from human ES cells. And you can see the nice apical microvilli, the very same as we've seen before with the fetal cells or with the explants. And if we go electron, and here's the tight junctions that are present. Here's the transmission EM. We see the microvilli. We see the apical melanin granules the same way. And we see the nice, uh, they develop tight junctions between the cells. So we get very well, very well highly polarized cells. And uh, we can do all kinds of uh, physiologic experiments. These have high trans epithelial resistance. They secrete appropriately apical and basal proteins, that type of thing. So they function in a very highly polarized way. Because now we're using those um, RPE cells on an explant uh, there, and then injecting, what we do is clean up the vitreous fluid in the retina. We make a bleb underneath the retina like that. And then we can use an instrument to cut a hole or retinotomy within the bleb underneath the, the retina and place this uh, membrane, biodegradable membrane, with these highly differentiated RPE cells, place it right underneath the retina itself. And then it sits down, and the apical microvilli of the uh, RPE cells then interdigitate with the photoreceptors, and we're able to maintain the explant within the subretinal space. And here's just closing up the eye afterwards. Is this in a what kind of animal? This is in a rabbit. And so we're doing two different animal models for testing these highly differentiated RP cells. One is in a rabbit model in which we cause degeneration of the RP cells with sodium iodate, cause a specific degeneration just of RP cells. And then we're using animals with uh, rats that have uh, uh, genetic uh, degeneration of the retinal pigment epithelial cells. So we're using both of these models right now. Sorry you couldn't see that. <laughs> Okay, so what are the problems that we're sort of looking at now before we can consider this type of treatment going to clinical trial? Well, we have to decide whether we're going to use RPE derived from embryonic stem cell lines or induced pluripotent stem cells. 
if we use embryonic stem cell lines, which are going to be the most appropriate uh, lines to use? We've shown, seen some variation among different lines in their ability to get really good RP cultures. Uh, what is the best bio biodegradable substrate for growth of RPE cells for transplantation? And how do we perfect the surgical techniques for, for implantation of the RPE? I think one uh, really good thing of the about the potential of this treatment is that surgery is so well defined on the retina, and this type of microsurgery is very, very well developed. And as you can see, we, it was it's quite a, a simple procedure these days for doing this type of surgical implantation under the retina. How will the RPE function on a thick and abnormal Brooks membrane? That's something I didn't get into, but the whole retinal microenvironment is not normal that this is going into. And that thick basement membrane is even is abnormal in patients with macular degeneration. So we need to know how that's going to affect these uh, transplants. And then, if embryonic stem cell derived RPE are used, how can the immune rejection of the transplanted cells be prevented? Uh, the subretinal space is a predominantly immune privileged site, but there is some evidence that you will get rejection of cells over a long period of time. Uh, do the RPE need to be genetically modified, for example, to produce uh, uh, neurotrophic growth factors to protect the retina? What's the best patient population for evaluation of this therapy? What is going to be the safety of this therapy? And what are the clinical endpoints that will uh, eventually determine the effectiveness of the therapy itself? Thank you. Do you have enough knowledge about the growth membrane to be able to say how easy it would be to understand and, and if there are problems there. Are. So the Brooks membrane in AMD patients becomes thicker. Yeah. It has uh, hydraulic um, conductivity is, is impaired. And there's also a lot of deposits within it. So there are methodologies currently available and are used in patients to resurface Brooks membrane. So I think that's what we plan to do is to go in, is to, at the time that the surgery is being done to do resurfacing of Brooks membrane and implant then the RPD cells on a biodegradable substrate on the Brooks membrane itself. The other thing that's very interesting is these RPE explants make their own basement membrane. So they'll start to reconstitute the Brooks membrane that was deficient in the patients with AMD. So that's, that's what we anticipate will happen. As the substrate, biodegradable substrate, uh, goes away, the RP cells will make their own uh, basement membrane that will then integrate into the uh, patient's original basement membrane. And there won't be any chance of the membrane being against your transplants? Uh, I don't think so, because we haven't seen any evidence of that at this point in the animal studies. I think that the top, I think topical immunosuppression will be sufficient, and you have that advantage that there are topical eye drop immunosuppressants. Yeah, it's quite possible that be, that, that would be sufficient, uh, considering that this is a, a partially immune uh, uh, tolerance site. So you, have you started looking? We haven't. We haven't got into that. Yeah. What's the difference between your approach and um, what's it, advanced cell technology, which is so what ACT did is they used suspensions of individual RPD cells. So they didn't dif differentiate them. They were able to show that they could get RPD cells that show some evidence of differentiation, but not to the extent that we're getting here. So ours are much more differentiated, much more highly polarized. And instead of injecting suspensions of RPD cells uh, into the subretinal space, we're growing them as this really intact, highly differentiated monolayer on a substrate and implanting that into the subretinal space. Right? 